Hello, and welcome to this presentation. Today we will be discussing a geometric view of the Heron's formula. So we begin with what I like to call the locus bisector theorem. We first start with some angle ABC, then construct the angle bisector from B, which by definition cuts the angle B in half. We can label the angle measurements theta, then we pick and label a point P anywhere on the bisector. Next, we label the points closest to P on segments AB and BC as X and Y respectively, that is, X lies on BA and Y lies on BC. Because we picked X and Y to be the closest points to P, angle BXP and angle BYP are right angles. Now we know that BP is equal to itself. Then by our congruent postulates, angle angle side will tell us that triangle BXP and BYP are congruent. Furthermore, XP is equal to PY. Now we move on to inscribed circles, or the encircle. We consider triangle ABC and label a point I where the angle bisectors of angle B and C meet. Next, we draw perpendiculars from the point I to the triangle sides. We will call the points where the perpendiculars meet the sides U, V, and W. Now we know by our previous theorem that UI is equal to VI is equal to WI, and thus triangle IWB is congruent to triangle IUB. The most important part here is that the points of tangency of an inscribed circle, or U, V, and W in our case, are equidistant from the vertex B or C. That is, B, W is equal to B, U, or C, U is equal to C, V. Moving on to the X scribe circle, or the X circle. It is similar to the construction of the N circle, but on the exterior of the triangles. We begin by constructing triangle ABC and extending its legs so that all three sides are tangent to a circle. Next, we label the points of tangency DGF and the center of the X circle or X center as E. As for the N circle, the important part here is to understand that the vertices are equidistant from the points of tangency on the X circle. That is, FB is equal to BG. Now before stepping into the main proof, I would like to demonstrate a small proof that describes the relationship between the area and the in radius. Let us consider triangle ABC with in center at point I and in radius of length R. And recall the area of a triangle is half the base times height. Now if we observe triangle BIC, IU starts at the top vertex and makes a 90 degree angle with BC at U. Therefore, the area of triangle BIC is one half BC times IU. In other words, one half times A times R. Similarly, triangle KIB has an area of one half times R times C, and triangle AIC has an area of one half R times B. Notice that the total area is the sum of the smaller areas, that is, half RA plus half RC plus half RB is equal to the entire area, or one half R times A plus B plus C. Therefore, we conclude that the area of any given triangle A, B, and C is equal to r, the length of the in radius, times s, the semi-perimeter. Continue our discussion of x scribe circles. Another consideration is that the semi-perimeter is half the perimeter. Just as before, fb is equal to gb and da is equal to ag. Notice then that cd is equal to ca plus ag and cf is equal to cb plus bg. When you add them, we get CD plus CF is equal to CA plus AG plus CF is equal to CB plus BG, which is equal to CA plus AB plus BC is equal to 2S. So we conclude that FC is equal to S. Now we are ready to discuss the formal proof of Huron's formula. Because they are radii of the X and N circle, EF and IQ are perpendicular to FC. This implies that EF is parallel to IQ. Now let's consider triangle EFC and IQC. Because they share angle C and both have 90 degree angles, they are similar by angle angle criterion. Now we consider triangles EFB and EGB. Because our previous theorem says FB is equal to BG, also 
they have right angles and share side EB. By side side angle criterion, EFB and EGB are congruent. The same can be said about triangles IPB and IQB. Now we can say that angle FBE and EVA are equal to some number alpha. Likewise, angle GBI and angle IBQ are equal to some number beta. Using the expression from the last slide, we can utilize the fact that FC is a straight line, which means that alpha plus alpha plus beta plus beta is going to equal to 180 degrees. Now let's observe triangle IBQ. Because of the sum of the angles in any given triangle is 180 degrees, I can conclude that angle BIQ is equal to 90 minus beta. Using the first step, we can see that alpha plus alpha plus beta plus beta is equal to 2 alpha plus 2 beta, which is equal to 2 times alpha plus beta, which is equal to 180 degrees. This implies that alpha plus beta is equal to 90 degrees, which then implies alpha is equal to 90 minus beta. So we see that angle BIQ is equal to alpha. In the same fashion, we can prove that angle FEB is equal to beta as well. This concludes that triangle IBQ and triangle EBF are similar. Summarizing the last two slides, we have triangle IQC is similar to EFC and triangle IBQ is similar to triangle EBF. Also, let the in radius or IQ equal to R. Then IQ over EF is equal to QC over FC, which then implies R over EF is equal to S minus A over S. Also, IQ over BQ is equal to FB over EF, which then implies R over S minus C is equal to S minus B over EF. So if we solve for EF, EF is equal to SR over S minus A is equal to S minus C times S minus B over R. Now, multiplying S minus A on both sides and R on both sides, we have SR squared is equal to S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. Is it looking familiar yet? Solving for R, we get R is equal to the square root of S minus A times S minus B times S minus C over S. Recalling that K is equal to RS in our new definition of R, we can conclude that the area of any triangle is equal to the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. And there you have it, Heron's formula broken down in a geometric way. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.